So what am I doing up at this hour of the morning? Firing pottery. Uh, when you fire pottery, you're better to do it as early as possible because it starts getting breezy maybe 9, 10 o'clock in the morning. So the stillest air of the whole day is first thing in the morning. And so I have like an hour drive to get out of Tucson and out into the country where I can fire without people getting upset or worrying about me lighting the woods on fire or calling the fire department on me. So uh, I got to get an early start to get out there before it gets too late. Here I go, off to fire my pots. Okay, it's three minutes after seven o'clock in the morning. I just got here to the firing site. Um, sun hasn't quite risen yet, but it's about to. Uh, first thing I gotta do is start collecting some firewood. So I'll be running around, grabbing firewood, and then I wanna start getting those pots preheated. Hey guys, today's video is about how to fire Salado polychrome pottery successfully in the outdoors. So if you're following the Salado challenge, this is the video you've been waiting for. I'm going to go step by step on how I fire Salado polychrome outdoors without burning out my organic paint. Behind me here I have a little fire, I have my pot sitting around it. This is not the pottery firing. I am just preheating the pots, trying to get them hot so that any remaining moisture is driven out of the clay body. That prevents breakage in the firing. And then I'm also building a bed of coals. That bed of coals will be the foundation of my firing. So later on, when I have that bed of coals established, I will stack the pottery above those coals and then build the fire over that. So I'm just at this point preheating the pottery and building a bed of coals. This takes maybe 45 minutes, half hour, something like that. And then we'll be ready to start firing. So here you can see I've got all my firewood stacked by size it's all broken into the kind of lengths I'm going to need for my firing. I get this all sorted out ahead of time that way when I'm ready to stack the wood over the fire I can do it rather quickly because I need to. That fire is going to light itself because of those hot coals underneath pretty quickly so I need to get that fuel on top of it as soon as I can. Now the first tip I'm going to give you today is about firewood and that is the diameter of your firewood. This is about the thickest stick I have, so thinner than my wrist. Maybe about two, three inches diameter at the most, okay? So keep your firewood relatively small because we're looking at a fire that's gonna burn itself out in 15 minutes or less. And so we don't want wood that's gonna burn 20 minutes, 30 minutes, that's just gonna be wasted. We want a quick, fast, low temperature fire. So first tip is keep your firewood about two, three inches in diameter or less. You see a lot of this is quite a bit less than that, okay? Small diameter wood. So the pots I have with me here today are, this one I painted in my last video that is painted with mesquite sap, experimental paint, okay? Uh, this one, little bowl painted with yucca fruit and another little bowl about the same size also painted with yucca fruit. So uh, the yucca fruit is a standard and we know it works. The mesquite sap we're not sure about so I'm gonna fire that today and see how it works. And they're just about done warming. Uh, the fire just needs a little more burning down and then we'll be off to the races. Oh my love You're such a fragile thing, I know And with the winter comes the ice, the snow But I'm here at all And oh my love Don't worry 
about the cold just yet The next tip I'm gonna give you is to stack your fuel loosely. So I'm ready to start stacking wood around this fire. I am not gonna to try to pack it too tightly. If I pack it too tightly, that pottery is gonna get smudgy on the inside and it's gonna take more oxidation to burn that out. I wanna keep it an open, oxidizing fire from the get-go, which means stacking it loosely enough that there's a lot of air circulation inside there. Stacking that wood far enough apart that I can literally look in and see the pots at all times. The trees haven't started to shed Just feel the summer sun As it warms our bed I'm lying And I'm lying When I say My third tip is to keep a close eye on the pots and break that fire up if it gets to a certain point. You're watching for two potential things. If you have some way to measure the temperature of the pots, you're looking to not get your temperature over about 750 Celsius. Uh, 680 to 720 is optimal. Uh, and you don't want to hold that for very long. You want to reach that temperature and start backing it off. The other thing you're looking for is that the pots have burned, the carbon has burned out of the surface of the pots. Now, not the areas that are painted, but the unpainted areas. So in the early part of the firing, those areas of the pot that are just slipped white or red will absorb carbon out of the atmosphere and they'll become dark and gray and sooty looking. And then as you get over about 650, that carbon will start burning off the surface. Once that carbon is burned clean, generally you've reached your temperature. So you're looking at a time period of about maybe 15 minutes, 12 minutes, somewhere in there, and you're looking at a temperature of about 700 degrees Celsius. Look at those whites. When those white slips are looking white, you've probably reached your temp. You don't always have to measure the temperature. It does help if you can. In this case, I overfueled this fire. I put too much wood on it because I was trying to make sure I had good coverage all the way around. I didn't want to leave any gaps. And before I lit it, I kind of looked at it and said, there's a lot of wood on here for salado firing. And so I reached those temps way before I burned off the wood. What I, what I try to do, what I'd like to do optimally is reach that temp, reach that point in my firing just as the wood's starting to all burn to coal. So I'm not wasting a lot of wood. In this case, I pulled it off. That fire could have burned for another 15 minutes and it would have got a lot hotter. So I pulled it off when I needed to, but I wasted a lot of wood. I didn't need to burn that much. Uh, I really overfueled this. Uh, maybe because I was doing it on camera and I wanted to make sure I got it right, but see, then I go too far the other way, which is just my personality. Anyway, you want to watch for that window and pull and break the fire up if you get to that point, because if you allow the fire to burn too long or too hot, you will burn the carbon out of the painted areas. That's what you don't want to do. So here's the mesquite sap um you know it looks to me like it left a okay black but i don't think it did as good as uh the yucca i'll get it home and clean it up under some water see if it looks any better than what it does now but i would say as of now uh, i don't like it as well you know something interesting is most of this organic paint, like bee plant and such, it, it'll leave ash on it. But this, 
Instead of ash, it's got black kind of fuzzy areas. And you wipe those away and the, the black paint is underneath. So strange, very different. Uh, it acts differently, uh, you know, in the fire. Like I said, it's, it's not terrible, you know. The designs look okay, but I don't think they're as black as they could be. So I will, um, I will clean it up and, and look at it good and close and see what I think. But as of now, I think the, I think the yucca fruit that was in the same fire uh, outperformed this. Uh, but it could just be that it's dusty and dirty and I'll clean it up and maybe I'll like it. This is typical of the fire clouds you see on Salado Polychrome. Uh, so the prehistoric stuff has fire clouds much like this. Uh, this is why I don't use cover shirts for Salado firings because I don't believe the ancient potters were using cover shirts. They were firing them upside down and then where the fuel landed on the pot, it left these fire clouds. So I like that just fine. I think it really looks neat. It makes it, it tells you that it was fired in an outdoor firing and it's authentic to the prehistoric record. And you get these neat colors where it kind of turns to brown or yellow and then redder places. So I think my colors came out real good on this. That's my mesquite sap paint. This is the first pot I did with the mesquite sap. All right, let's talk briefly about how we did. Uh, overfueled the fire, we already talked about that. Uh, but the key wasn't that I overfueled it. The key was that I kept an eye on the pottery and got it out of there before it overfired. So remember my three tips? They were keep your fuel diameter relatively small, stack that wood loosely so there's lots of oxygen available to the fire. And third, keep an eye on the pots and get them out of there when they're done. Don't overfire them or that organic paint will burn out. So. Here's the one I did with mesquite sap. Like I said, uh, I don't think it's as black as it could be. It's still a suitably nice little pot and I like it okay, uh, but I'm not sure I'm gonna use mesquite sap again, given the results. And you have to have something to compare that to. So yucca fruit, and this is a good black. Now, this, may, this is blacker than you might think looking here. And that is because uh, organic paint usually leaves a layer of ash over the painted surface. And so I haven't wiped the ash off here and you're seeing all that ash on it and that makes it look grayer in places. So stay tuned to the end of this video and you will see me wipe the ash off and see just how black these designs really are. Uh, again, the back, I've got some really good fire clouds. I've got red and kind of yellow and brown areas and some black spots. So I'm really happy with uh, the kind of variegated colors that I have on the back there. And here's the other one, also done with yucca fruit. Again, we've got some really nice colors playing around on the back. Uh, I've got a decent polish on this one too. And then uh, again, the ash. So you can see some of that gray area, that's just ash and that'll wipe off. And I'll show you that in just a minute. Uh, so I think overall a really successful firing and I hope you can learn to fire organic paint oxidized yourself. If you're interested in doing that, uh, check out my video I did about how to make Salado Polychrome. I'll put the link to that right over here in case you're interested and uh, join the Salado Challenge. I've selected a series of pots that I'm gonna replicate this year. And I even have some bonus pots that I'm not gonna replicate, but you can. I've taken measurements on all of them. They're all on that video I talked about. You make that pot, take a picture, post it to Instagram with the hashtag Salado Challenge. So I hope to see some of you posting some videos of Salado soon. In my Ancient Potters Club for November, we did a Gila Polychrome jar, Salado Polychrome and a couple of the students have already fired theirs and they came out great. So I know this is something that you can do. I look forward to seeing that, all right? Thanks for watching today. I'll catch you next time.